Greetings, friends. Uh, <coughs> we're here today to uh, remember uh, a colleague, friend, uh, Tatiana Malguiso. Uh, <coughs> many of us know she's passed several weeks now, um, but uh, we haven't, as a community, had a chance to come together. So this is important. Um, we're ha happy that Pierre, her husband, is here with us today. I know it's still the grieving is still uh, sore and an open wound. It takes time. Uh, yesterday, it turns out, was the 18th anniversary of my first wife passing. And uh, for my family, for my kids, still very much um, a loss that will last for a long time. Um, when I think of Tatiana, the words that come to mind first and foremost were brilliant, uh, incisive, thoughtful, compassionate, nurturing, great sense of humor. Um, I hope today is not just a time to grieve, but also to celebrate her life. Um, you know, she touched many of us in profound ways. And uh, I actually share a, a mentor with Tatiana in Martin Carnoy. Um, at Stanford, and I know that when Martin spoke about Tatiana, he talked about that bright light, that amazing uh, energy that she brought to everything she undertook. And uh, that's how we should remember her. Um, she was a person who brought so much to her work, to everything she undertook. And uh, so as we do, and as we embrace Pierre and his family, because uh, to lose a partner to lose a mother is a major loss. Um, let's also remember that uh, as a community, we're stronger when we're together, um, and that strength needs to show up for Pierre and the family too. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Pulius, for organizing this, for giving this gathering. Um, and uh, let again, let's make this a celebration of life. Thanks very much, Pedro. And um, good morning. My name is Adriana Kizar, and I'm the director of the Puglia Center. And I want to welcome everyone here. We also have people who are live streaming um, joining us as well. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about how the memorial is organized. We're going to hear from a variety of speakers um, that are going to address Tatiana's many special roles in our lives as wife and mother, friend, scholar, colleague and mentor to many. Um, I will focus on her role as an exceptional colleague, scholar, and friend. And um, we're gonna start off things after I speak with a video um, that speaks to schol her scholarly motivations and early influences. And then we're going to end the event um, with some time to connect, support each other, and eat food together, as Pedro said, to support each other as a community. So. Thank you all for being here um, as a supportive community. So I wanted to share just um, a few words about my own connection and experience working with Tatiana. It's hard to believe it's 20 years. Um, Tatiana and I joined the Puglia Center um, and USC right around the same time back in 2004. And as new faculty members, um, we, were, we both went through a lot of the struggles of an early career together. Things like getting tenure, getting promoted, navigating school politics, and sometimes challenging people. Um, but we did not always talk about work. Tatiana was always really grounded. Those of you who know her knew this. She knew that the most important thing was her family and her friends. Our conversations at work always returned to her family and children, vacations and emerging interests and likes and dislikes. 
What became clear um, also early on when we were working together is that she was a real warrior for social justice and equity. And as Tatiana gained confidence in her voice to stand up for those students who were least likely and to be successful and go to college, she developed an interest in community colleges where the most disadvantaged students are often found themselves. She decided to partner with the Los Angeles Community College District to study key barriers to students' um, success, like math education and testings that placed them in remedial education, where they often got stuck. She identified all of these key problems and sought to dismantle them so students could be successful. Tatiana went further, though, and she um, brought together national convenings and symposiums, bringing together people who could um, really discuss those barriers and offer solutions. I would say she was determined to have an impact and make changes. And her work developed, helped start, I'll say, like a, a real revolution in remedial education and testing and math education and advising at community colleges. And this work carries on. Her work will impact policymakers and practice for the next few decades. Over her career, Tatiana inspired many, many graduate students to also study these issues. She has dozens of students also carrying on this work now, and she was a kind and caring mentor. Since her passing, former and cur current graduate students have reached out to share how much she had impacted them, and many of them are going to actually be speaking today as well. Um, but they all agreed that she made them feel like family, cared about them and asked about their lives, stayed in touch, and was always there for them. Faculty felt the same way. Tatiana always listened. Those of you who know her, she was a really great listener. She was there to support and could really be dependent on. We worked together on a project called Promoting at Promise College um, student success, and she was always there for me on this very challenging project, offering advice. The Puglia Center will not be the same place without her. She helped us become the center known for advancing equity in higher education, and her legacy and the center's legacy are really intertwined. Um, to hear more about Tatiana's work, we're now going to watch this video. My father was a banker with respect and integrity. I remember going out to a restaurant with him and my family. We went there often because my dad loved their steak and fries. We always wore our most formal clothing. In the middle of our meal, a man approached my father and greeted the rest of the family. Despite the formality of the restaurant, he warmly thanked my dad for the loan and financial advice for his business. My dad, as always, was very serious and stern and gracefully acknowledged the man. But he also made it clear that he remembered the man's name and other things about him. He soon left and we went back to our dinner. It's about 30 years ago. I was lying next to my mother on her bed watching Café, one of the most popular telenovelas in Colombia. We always talk about something while we watch, but this time I broke down. I had always done well in school, but I felt like my college engineering program was just beyond me. It was so much more difficult than any school work I've done before. She listened. She didn't judge me. She just told me that whatever I wanted to do was fine. She was giving me the freedom to transfer out of engineering and pursue what I really wanted, economics. But she did it without making me feel I was a failure or hadn't done my best. We didn't really say anything else. We just kept lying there, watching. That's how I like to advise my students. I think about them as individuals, their culture and their unique strength. I recognize their strengths. I work with them to identify and help them craft a unique professional path that they are passionate about. And as they work and sometimes fail, 
I'm there to offer honesty, care, and options to move forward. On the other hand, as a researcher, I'm cynical. I don't often believe what people tell me. I believe in their actions. Actions that can be measured and counted. I prefer data. They show a different kind of story. Not the only story or the true story, but stories that have the potential to change people's lives. Thanks. I'd now like to introduce Federic Go. He's the associate professor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and a longtime colleague and former graduate student working with Tatiana. Morning, everyone, and thank you for putting that video together. It's, it's just really nice to hear her voice again. Um, I'd like to share some words I've previously written about Tatiana. Um, and since I'm mainly speaking in my capacity as one of her uh, PhD advisees, I've also incorporated some sentiments from fellow students of hers who I know are watching. Hello. Um, I first met Tatiana in 2012, just after I'd been admitted to the PhD program at USC Rasir. Um, she exuded an uncommon warmth and kindness, and I knew I had to take the chance to work with her. It, it turned out to be one of the best decisions of my life. I came to USC knowing she was doing some exciting work on student success in community college at the time, but what I didn't know was that this was just one aspect of her prolific research in higher education. Her dissertation and early research asked new and novel questions about the role of colleges in, and universities in student success, and she was part of a wave of researchers who explored these questions using the economics of higher education. Her work helped pivot the field from a focus on student capacities and deficits to a focus instead on institutional responsibility and institutional resources as they, saw, as they sought to support and graduate their students. In her research, she paid particular attention to students of color, low-income students, community college transfer students. Tatiana also asked important research questions about institutional priorities, including the pursuit of prestige, and the implications of this pursuit for inequities in university commitments. She also did fascinating and sophisticated quantitative work in international higher ed to advance understanding of topics that are really hard to study in the US due to data limitations, such as being able to assess learning at a national scale in higher education using data from Brazil and evaluating the causal impact of access to student loans for higher education in her native Colombia. Through all of this, she was most proud of her work in support of community colleges, and she greatly treasured the partnerships she built um, with faculty and leaders in Los Angeles and throughout the state. Um, Eddie Chi, one of Tatiana's other doctoral students, wanted me to share the following. In 2014, I became Tatiana's PhD student after working at community colleges. I was interested in her growing work. In being her student, I learned about her research, including the many successful collaborations she formed and led. Her work included not only community colleges, it spanned higher ed institutions across continents. After graduating in 2019, I returned to working at a community college. Returning allowed me to see the impact of her body of work firsthand. These impacts included the elimination of dead-end remedial courses and implementation of support programs for students. Eddie says, at my job every day, in meetings with colleagues and in classrooms, I see how she has improved colleges and made students' ambitions possible. A part of her legacy is the helping hand her work is providing current and future generations of college students. Like Eddie and other doc student graduates, Liz Park, Holly Kozowitz, Kristen Fong, David Velasquez, and also her postdoctoral mentees who are here, um, Sumia Mishra and Elise Swanson. I feel so lucky to have had the chance to work with her at USC. She was just so warm and vibrant and a gift to this community. Whenever I meet someone new in academia who knew Tatiana, whether that's a conference or elsewhere, 
and I mentioned that I got the, I work with Tatiana at USC, they're instantly brightened. And they share their love and admiration and my luck. We continued our collaboration after I graduated and joined the faculty, and we've actually met once or twice a month for the past 12 years. I looked forward each time to hearing about her three kids, her multicultural and multinational life and perspective, and always the latest gossip. <laughs> she always had sage advice for my career and family life. Through her choices, advice, and example, she single-handedly demonstrated to me a vision for what faculty life could be, and opposite to what the forces of the academy want us to be. She prioritized her family, she valued connections and partnerships more than the work itself, and she welcomed opportunities to learn and grow as both a scholar and human. Holly was her first doctoral student, and I know Holly's watching online, and she wanted me to share these sentiments. There hasn't been a day when I don't think about Tatiana I miss her, her smile, her warmth, her support, how she said my name. I'll never forget when she picked me up on the 10, when someone rear-ended my car and took me back home when she was just about to put dinner on the table, or how excited she was when she found out that I was getting married and having kids. She was that type of person, generous with her time and her heart. I still can't quite process that she's not with us anymore, that we won't be able to have dinner together, or work on a project together, or just exchange a short catch-up email. I looked forward to introducing my kids to her and laughing over and over again about how I unintentionally made four-year-old Mateo cry by beating him in a race at LACMA. <laughs> there are so many memories of Tatiana that I cherish. I just wish there were many more to create. Te extraño, mi amiga querida, pero gracias a Dios que estás en paz. Abrazos bien bien fuertes. Losing an academic mentor has been such a unique form of grief and loss for a first-generation college student, grad student, and now professor like myself because I felt that Tatiana knew me in ways that even my parents did not and still do not because of this new space we were traversing together. I owe much of the life and career I have today to her guidance and support, and I still feel a sense of sadness about um, how my life and career will go forward, and sadness about how our field will be without her. Yet I also treasure that all that I've received about how to act, think, and be in this place. Liz Park wanted me to share the following words. I hope to make her proud by conducting some of the most rigorous impact studies focused on under <laughs> underserved students' success. You go do that, Liz. <laughs> Uh, my academic accomplishments are and will be a tribute to her work legacy. She once told me as I was graduating that our connection will always be there. And it's true, our connection will always exist. Tatiana, I'm so grateful that our lives intersected. I'm heartbroken by the loss, as we all are. But I'm also comforted when I think of all the people in the USC community and beyond who got to meet or work with you, or even just have a short conversation with you. Even the shortest time with you, Tatiana, was a gift. Thank you. Thanks so much, Federic. I'd like now to introduce Estella Zarate. She's a faculty fellow at the Diana uh, Natal Institute for Hispanic Student Success at the University of Texas, El Paso, and a longtime friend and colleague of Tatiana. First, I'd like to thank Dean Pedro Noguera and Professor and Director of the Puglia Center, Adriana Quezar, for hosting this event. And Pierre, thank you for being here. I am humbled to have been invited to honor our dear colleague and friend Tatiana. While our work sometimes intersected and we had mutual respect and admiration for each other's scholarship, she was foremost una querida amiga to me. I first met Tatiana when I interviewed for a postdoc position here at USC, and she attended my job talk. I remember she asked difficult but relevant questions about the methodology of the study. 
And I can't remember the details, but she left an impression of her sharp and incisive thinking. I think that's the second or third time somebody's used that word to describe her. In retrospect, she was also sharing with me one of her most generous qualities, showing up for others. She showed up for me by attending a job talk for a position that was rather inconsequential to her. Alas, that position did not pan out, but I ended up in another position across campus at the School of Public Policy. When she heard I was here at USC across campus, she invited me to a writing group that consisted of five untenured women across five different schools here at USC. Through that writing group, our lifelong friendship began. The writing group also represented what Tatiana enjoyed doing, bringing people together across socially constructed, or in this case, academically constructed boundaries. I very much admired and was sometimes puzzled, I must admit, by Tatiana's ability to look, diff overlook differences with others and instead to look for shared experiences to start a conversation or a friendship. In her memory, I have been working to extend kindness and curiosity to others whom I may initially doubt, to grow that practice in my heart the way Tatiana did it so effortlessly. At the end of last year, just before she headed out with her family for the holiday season, Tatiana and I saw each other six times over the course of four consecutive weeks for both work events and leisure, personal, um, personal leisure. As working mothers, it had been years since we had been able to see each other that frequently. It was so special to see her happy and in lighter spirits as we brought the year to a close. In one of those last times, I guest lectured to her class, followed by a delicious meal at Mercado La Paloma, of course. In that class, her student Glenda posed a great question that made Tatiana and I pause, then lit connections in our brains, and then a quick exchange with Tatiana ensued before we remembered there was a class lecture to continue. That was the last time her quick thinking and inquisitive remarks left me with exciting research ideas. And it brought memories of the Tatiana I first met 20 years ago. Thank you. In some ways, our next uh, speaker needs no introduction. It's Estella Bensimone, longtime faculty member here at USC and a friend of Tatiana. She's going to offer comments via video. Um, she sends her regrets as she's out of the country. Querida Tatiana, no puedo sacar de mi cabeza tu voz diciéndome, te busco. Te busco en tu oficina, te busco en la reunión, te busco ya. Te busco was what Tatiana would say to let me know that she would come by my office so we could walk together to a faculty meeting, have coffee or lunch. Our offices were on the same floor, the opposite corners. The literal translation of te busco is, I will look for you, but it means much more than just that, I will look for you. It means I will search for you. Y ahora, Todos te buscamos a vos, Tatiana. I loved hearing her say te busco. It felt as if she would not leave me alone, that she would not go without me. Tatiana and I became instant friends, and when she came to USC, we immediately fell into a rhythm of speaking in Spanish. I am sure we pissed many people because we were very impolite and spoke in Spanish among many of you who do not speak it. When Tatiana was appointed assistant professor and moved to Los Angeles, she rented an apartment a few blocks from where I live. We would call each other up and together we would walk to the alcove on Hillhurst to have coffee and chismosear, which means gossip about everything that was going on around us. 
Tatiana met my mother when she was in her 90s. My mother adored Tatiana and enjoyed looking at the photos of the children that Tatiana would share during the trips that she and Pierre took to Morocco, to Greece, to France, and to Colombia. Tatiana moved to California from Colombia to study at Stanford. English was her second language, and I am sure it was a very challenging cultural transition to move from Bogota to Stanford. Tatiana's positive outlook, her warmth, her daring, and her ease in making friends probably made the transition to the U.S. less challenging than it might have been otherwise. Her confidence was also an asset. Moving to another country when one's already is grown up, learning a foreign language, going through the hardships of graduate school and tenure, competing for grants, producing publications, these things are hard for everyone. They were hard for all of us. Imagine if you had to do it all in a foreign language. Tatiana did it all. Plus, she raised a family of three young children. Tatiana traveled to Bogota every year, and when she came back, she would always have a gift for me, a piece of art or jewelry. The necklace that I'm wearing today, which is a gold leaf, if you can see it, was the last gift she gave me. Admirably, when she married Pierre, she converted to Judaism, which required her to study a great deal and learn yet another culture. All of it at the same time she was teaching and writing. I admired Tatiana's determination to become Jewish, to learn the religion, to adopt and faithfully observe its rituals. Tatiana, like her husband, and children was trilingual. She spoke English, Spanish, and French, and she also spoke Spanglish. Querida Tatiana, tu vida fue demasiada breve, pero aunque breve, vos la supiste vivir con gusto. Para mí, tu amistad fue muy importante y te agradezco tu paciencia y tolerancia de mis idiosincrasias. Tatiana, ahora soy yo la que te busca y algún día te encontraré. Dear Tatiana, your life was too short, but despite its shortness, you lived it with joy. For me, our friendship was very meaningful and I am grateful that you put up with my idiosyncrasies. Now, I search for you, and one of these days, I will find you. I'd now like to welcome Glenda Palacios, a graduate student currently working with Tatiana, who came from Colombia, their shared homeland, to study here at USC. Hey, hi everyone. Yes, I am Tatiana student, and I would like to add, to add, like for me, Tatiana also was a, a healer. Most for those who came, who are international students, but also who have been in traumatic experiences uh, working with economists. So, <laughs> I, to be honest, all the time when I talk with Tatiana, I recall her how sweet, how kind she was. And last year, when we were teaching together in the first day of the class, Tatiana told us that one of her colleagues, Adrian Huerta, shared a um, poem. So we in the first class was 
were writing about that. And Tatiana wrote a beautiful poem that I am going to read today. And traditionally in my black community, we always, when we want to honor our ancestor, we ask for her permission. And today I asked Tatiana to let me read this beautiful writing. Where I am from by Tatiana Melguizo. I am, I am from, ni soy de aquí, ni soy de allá. From fresias and the smell of a smoke every summer. I am from a fail state that is driven with compassion, reggaeton, and where la candida herendia greet us every day. Calidad es humana, rampant inequality, verde, que te quiero verde, rebusque, echoes of violence, and an imperfect peace deal. I am from orchids hiding their strain, attached to the soil, planting seeds of empathy, remembering a tall pillar of integrity. I am from frisoles antioqueños and los apellidos and a young man who recycle clothes in the 1920s. From los Uribes Echeverris and an squeak we that should be pronounced like a knee in English and sounds like a derizo in Spanish. I am from the smell of pandero and a fairly and introspectively planting empathy from independent and love in a way that hurt others. I am from Primera Comunión and Rabbi Braus. I am from Rio Negro, Bogotá, and Los Cerros Orientales, Patacón Pisao, Cuscús, Crepes, y arepas, from the compassionate oncologist, Dr. Bash Drops, Pandeyucas, Curanderos, Worldless Love, Painful Sacrifices, Sign Derivadas e Integrales, while smelling the vapor of the food tray at the hospital, the premise y el trillizo, a soli re reliable rock. La Catedral de Río Negro, la Señorita Antioquia, las Reinas de Belleza Colombianas, the Twin in the Castle, the Twin in the Rivers, and the Twins that decided not to stay. Muchas gracias a Tatiana. Yo también la estoy buscando. And next, we have Maury Pearl, who is Associate Vice Chancellor of Institutional Effectiveness at the Los Angeles Community College District and longtime collaborator with Tatiana, as you've heard about already. He's going to share some words as well. Thank you, Andreana. Uh, Tatiana began a rich and rewarding partnership with the Los Angeles Community College District's offices of institutional effectiveness where I work and the office of student success over 17 years ago. Realizing the need to study equitable practices and student outcomes in the community colleges and the opportunity for working with the largest community college district in California and by some uh, measures in the nation. Tatiana's vision was to develop a mutually beneficial collaborative relationship between the USC Rossier School and the Los Angeles Community College District. Uh, under, her, under her leadership, this vision was implemented through the development of data sharing agreements, joint research projects, and policy research focusing on statewide and LACCD policy initiatives 
uh, such as the implementation of the landmark AB 705 legislation. Uh, this is legislation that limited remedial coursework and promoted degree and certificate completion and transfer completion. Uh, our Los Angeles uh, College Promise Program, LACCD's program of free college for full-time students, and most recently studying the impacts of the COVID-19 experience on enrollment and student success. Uh, and all of this leading to the development of numerous grant-funded uh, research initiatives. The Research Practitioner Partnership uh, that Tatiana initiated brought uh, all of us together, the LACCD faculty, uh, USC graduate students and faculty into a close collaboration that fostered mutual learning and understanding, shaping the focus of research and the interpretation of outcomes based on a deeper understanding of LACCD institutional processes and needs, and thereby making them meaningful and accessible to the LACCD community. The collaboration has been a model relationship for us, providing us with access to high quality research resources and addressing the most important uh, student success and policy issues facing our district and also allowing USC researchers access to, U to LACCD faculty, staff, and students and the ability to research one of the largest, most diverse, and complex educational in institutions in the United States. We will sorely miss Tatiana's intellect, energy, and spirit and seeing her in our regular RPP meetings and in the annual convenings which she brought, uh, which brought together LACCD and USC communities, but are grateful for the warm relationship that we developed and maintained, both personally and professionally. More than anything else, Tatiana's unwavering and deeply felt commitment to students shone through every collaboration. She brought students and their needs to the center of our work reminding us always to see things in the light of the student communities we serve and to look for new ways to meet students where they are and support them with rigor and humanity. So on behalf of the numerous LACCD staff and faculty uh, who had the privilege of working with Tatiana over the many years of association with our colleges, uh, our heartfelt condolences go out to her family and the USC community. Uh, and uh, in, in her memory, we will strive to continue the rich and productive relationship that she and we work so hard to develop and maintain. May her memory forever be a blessing. Thank you. And I would uh, like to call forward uh, Tatiana's husband, Pierre Olivier Weil. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start by uh, uh, noting that uh, uh, it's you know hard, it's hard not to notice today's solar eclipse and. Uh, that it reminds me of my impossible hope to see Tatiana's light come back uh, to our lives. Then I'd like to thank the organizers of this great conference. It's deeply moving <clears throat> and meaningful to myself and my family that the USC community has organized this event in honor of Tatiana, who dedicated all her, her academic career to this university and was, as you know, deeply attached to her colleagues and students. I also believe that establishing a scholarship uh, in honors Tatiana's academic legacy in the best possible way. And I would like to thank the Puglia Center uh, for taking this initiative. Uh, when I spoke about Tatiana at her funeral and uh, during Shiva, I focused on memories from uh, 25 years of family life. And today I will speak briefly 
uh, about Tatiana's academic life and career. Uh, so Tatiana was admitted to the PhD program in education at Stanford University in the spring of 1998. And that day she wrote in her diary, Hoy sucedió mi mayor sueño. Abrí el computador, encontré un mensaje de sí, Martin Carnoy. Era un sueño hecho realidad en que me dice que quiere ayudarme a conseguir fondos, scholarship. Yeah. Uh, today, my biggest dream realized. I opened my computer and found a message of, yes, Martin Carnoy. It was a dream come true. And he tells me he wants to help me uh, obtain funding. So Tatiana accepted the offer, and she arrived at Stanford at the beginning of the fall quarter of 1998. And then she started taking classes in the education school and the economics department. So uh, I mentioned economics class because it gives me an excuse to tell an anecdote I, I told earlier. The first year microeconomic class at the time made heavy use of mathematics, something that Tatiana had not trained for previously. And so during the fall quarter, uh, she sent a classified email announcement to recruit a tutor. I was a master's student at the time, but I managed to be part of the email list for those classified. So I received it and I immediately applied for the job. But Tatiana turned me down. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even sure she answered my email. <laughs> I learned months after we met and remembered the classified that she hired the previous TA of the class instead of me. And was lucky, maybe because of what Glenda said, no? so it, being the tutor would not have been the best way to start uh, our relationship. <laughs> so I met Tatiana not, not long after this classified, two months into graduate school, and from then on, uh, we built 25 years of life in the United States together. Part of this life was dedicated to our academic careers, which offered us a path to adulthood while keeping our childhood love for learning and, and creativity. Tatiana was my soulmate, but during this year, she was also my classmate and my teacher. Um, Tatiana was studying economics of education in the School of Ed, and I was studying uh, macroeconomics and finance in the Department of Economics. While these areas of studies are deeply connected, they are also different in important ways. In particular, the economics I was studying uh, would sometimes leave crucial policy questions unanswered just because economists would consider that the best data available is imperfect. It doesn't offer good quasi-experimental conditions. So this is the high ground, method methodologically pure, but ultimately it's flawed because it fails to create the structured knowledge that would truly help policymakers make crucial decisions. In contrast, the economics of education that Tatiana was passionate about, about, the one taught in School of Ed, always insists on addressing crucial policy questions head on with whatever data is available. And Tatiana would never give up on important questions. Because of data imperfection, instead, she would always insist on providing the best available answers to policymakers given available data. Uh, Tatiana had a deep passion and care for her area of research, and we heard about many of her contributions today. I thought I would just comment on one of her many achievements, one you may not know about. Uh, Tatiana was invited to the White House uh, to discuss her research on strengthening community colleges and expanding college opportunities for students. The invitation was on January 20th, 2016, so that was the Obama White House. Uh, but she turned it down because she was about to give birth to our daughters, Amalia and Juliette. I believe this was one of her proudest moments in her career. It is certainly one that will help her children understand how bright, dedicated, and successful scholar uh, their mother has been. Thank you. So as um, Pierre mentioned, um, the Puglia Center and Rosier have set up a scholarship um, in Dr. Melguizo's name to honor her legacy. And for those of you interested in supporting it, the information is in the memorial agenda and it's on the slide for those of you attending virtually. Um, 
you know, uh, the the scholarship fund um, is called the Tatiana Melgizo Memorial Scholarship Fund for Community College Transfer Students, and it honors her commitment and research supporting community colleges and her um, and ensuring their success. It honors her work as a highly accomplished professor and leader in the field of education and her contributions to the community college sector and students. So this is a way that we will continually be able to see her impact in the lives of students who get this scholarship. Um, please join me and the Polia Center in supporting this important fund to honor her legacy. You can easily set up also a monthly donation, um, even through your USC paycheck. Um, as you've heard about, her research um, with the Los Angeles Community College District really paved the way for new understandings of barriers of student success and access, and this scholarship will be an, an ongoing reminder of that work. So now I would like to open um, up to, to anyone who wants to offer up their own reflection. Um, so if there's anybody who feels compelled to speak, I just welcome you to share any thoughts right now. Yes, please. Where um, it might be easier for people to hear you if you come up here. Thank you. Yes, just feel free. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a first year PhD student at Rossier, and something important is I'm also Colombian, <laughs> like Tatiana. And earlier I said, thank God I don't have to speak because I don't think I can keep the composure, but. I, I would easily call Tatiana the most influential person in my life. I similarly <laughs> left an engineering career for pursuing education and perhaps not as lucky as her, I disappointed an entire family by doing it. And I, I remember that when I did this straight out of undergrad and when I was picking my undergraduate institution, I would put every school in the GPS to see how far it was from home. And home was Rhode Island. So I was not willing to move very far. Moving two hours to go to school in Boston, Massachusetts was a big deal for me. And I remember, funnily enough, when Tatiana and I were supposed to meet to chat, Zoom didn't work for us, so we had to do a phone call. And I was like, can I please speak to you in English? I swear I'm smarter in English than I am in Spanish. And in the 30 minutes that we spoke, I remember hanging up the call and telling my husband, we're moving to LA. As long as, as long as she accepts me, we're moving to LA and I'm going to work for her. And I feel every confidence that Tatiana will be a constant influence, not just on the scholarship that I produce, but in almost any paper I have been writing recently or any positionality, I mentioned that Tatiana's existence and her success and the happiness with which I saw her live her life for me was proof that I too could do it. I got through all of edu education in the US since I was 12 all the way to graduating from undergrad without ever having a Hispanic professor. She was the first I ever encountered and luckily for me, Colombian. And I, the dean is here, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> And I was going to say that from my conversations with other people, I think perhaps the secret in Ross here was that Tatiana must have been one of your best recruitment tools. <laughs> Truly, I, for me to move to California, that spoke lengths, but also there are a lot of bright minds that are here in part because of her charm <laughs> and the vision she was willing to say that was possible at Ross here and in Los Angeles. And as Estela, when she said the busco, that reminded me of how Tatiana made me feel. I feel like I wasn't earning her attention or her affection or her support. She simply chose to give it to me without even knowing what, what my face looked like that day that we talked while we were time zones away. And I just wanted to say that any scholarship I produce, whether within the community college space and even my character <laughs> as I survive the PhD, will forever be forged by the influence that she had in my life. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my name's Ron Hallett. I'm a research professor. Uh, I actually just came back to the Rossier School. I started off as a PhD student, um, and Tatiana was one of my champions. I remember when she found out I was coming back, she was so excited uh, to have me come back. And I was talking to her. There were actually some pictures uh, of us in our last conversation that we had at a conference. Um, and I was I'm just going to start this new community college project in Nebraska. And there's this vexing problem that we've been trying to figure out uh, around how students made decisions. And I won't go into the details. Um, but I think there's a picture of me laughing. And it might have been that moment where I explained it to Tatiana. And of course, she was like, it's not vexing. It's completely rational. And then explain to me why uh, it was a simple answer to a question that seemed really complex. Um, and I loved that about her. But I, what I really miss so dearly and see in every picture was how much she cared about me as a student, how she cared about me as an early career professional, um, and as I continue to advance. Uh, Adriana mentioned uh, a big project that we started that I'm still working on nine years later. Uh, but at the start of that project, um, my mom was also going through end of life. Uh, and I was trying to take care of her uh, as she was um, navigating that process and starting this project and all of the other things. And I just remember how Tatiana would pull me aside when we'd have big meetings uh, and just check in. Um, there was actually a building not too far away from here where we sat on the couch and she just listened and consoled and told me how proud my mom was of me, even though she hadn't met her, because as a mom, she knew how much uh, it meant for her kids to do well. And she just had such joy and care. Uh, and those are the things that I carry with me, is how to care for a colleague uh, and a student, um, as well as to give good advice uh, about scholarship and support. So. Thank you so much for sharing her with us because it really made a difference in my life. Um, so Zoe so just reminded me, we have uh, set up an email for anybody who wants to share memories um, with Pierre and the family. And it is Amor, more for a more for Tatiana, Tatiana at gmail.com. And um, we can make sure to get that out to everybody. It's also in the Pullius newsletter for any of, the, yeah, and the, on the website. So if that's another way for you to, to capture that. Thank you, Zoe. Um, unless anybody else would like to share any comments, um, I'll now close the formal event and we'll start connecting and eating. And I, I wanna thank all of our um, speakers for sharing their memories of Tatiana. And for those of you online, um, thanks so much for attending and please know that it means so much um, to all of us, including Tatiana's family to have you here um, physically and virtually today. And please, everybody, um, be well and carry Tatiana in your, in your memories. Thanks. <laughs>